Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we got a good one for you. We're going to be talking about a technique that's not talked about very often in the smallmouth fishing world, uh, but it's a very effective technique to use for them, especially if you live on the Great Lakes or really anywhere that has some big smallmouth in it. And that's going to be a crankbait. Um, not a lot of people talk about fishing a crankbait for smallmouth. Um, we're going to do a couple different things in today's video. We're going to start with just talking about gear inside here in the studio. Um, there's no wind noise, that's the only reason why. Then we're going to get out on the lake. I'm going to show you how to graph and find these fish and where you need to be fishing your crankbait. Then we're going to show you how to fish it and actually catch some fish on it. So stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm going to offer a ton of tips. We're going to show you some really cool stuff out on the lake that you're really going to want to pay attention to. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead down below and hit the subscribe button for me. It would help me out a ton. And I put new fishing videos out every Monday and Thursday from how-to videos like this to tournament footage following along with all my tournaments that I fish. So if you don't want to miss any of that, hit the subscribe button down below. So when it comes to gear, I'm going to keep this portion very simple. I know you guys want to see some fish catch and the more important stuff of how to find them. That's the more important part. Um, Basic crankbait setup. This is my square bill rod that I use or like light crankbait stuff. We're not talking like 10 XDs or anything like that for smallmouth. Um, so this is a Dobbin 705 CB cranking rod. It's like a composite glass crankbait rod. Um, basically just use whatever crankbait rod you're comfortable with that can handle like a 12, 15, eight foot diving range crankbait. Usually eight to 15 is about the range that I'm fishing these crankbaits. Uh, depending on your lake, you might fish shallower, maybe fish deeper, but I usually don't fish deeper than about 15 foot with a crankbait. There's a lot of other effective baits you can use. Um, a reel, fairly simple, um, just a lose. This is a Tournament Pro speed spool, but the most important thing is your gear ratio. I use a six to one. Um, it could be a six three, six four, six eight, whatever it is, just something in that six range for a gear ratio. That's the key. Again, I'm not gonna mention too many um, details like brands or anything like that on this because every company makes what I'm gonna be talking about here. If you wanna see what I'm using, I'll link it down below if you wanna check it out. But realistically, your basic crankbait rod and reel is gonna get the job done just fine. As for line, 12 pound fluorocarbon, that's all I'm fishing. It's gonna get the crankbait down there to the right depth. I fish the Great Lakes, has a lot of zebra mussels and stuff like that. So the heavier line, even though it's only 12 compared to 10, tends to hold up just a little bit better down there. So that's the reason why I go with 12. If you feel more comfortable with 10, you can go with 10. I, I just wouldn't go any heavier than 12 pound test. So for crankbaits, let's start out with one thing. I'm gonna show you two crankbaits that actually dive the exact same depth, but you can see what I'm talking about here on size difference. This is gonna be a six cents C15. Um, this goes about 15 foot deep, 12 to 15, depending on your cast. And then this right here is a Strike King 3XD. That one goes 12 foot as well. So both of these would fish effectively in a 12 foot depth zone, but look at the size difference there. You're talking huge size difference on baits. Would a smallmouth eat this bait? Absolutely. But you're going to get more bites a lot of times if you're fishing these smaller crankbaits like this. Um, the only problem is this crankbait weighs about 3 eighths of an ounce. This crankbait weighs an ounce. So you're going to get a farther cast out of this so you can keep it in the strike zone longer. So not saying there's a right or wrong answer on which crankbait you fish. Everyone has their time and place or else I wouldn't own both of them. You just have to pick the right crankbait for your given scenario. This one has a much louder rattle, much more aggressive action. This one has a little softer rattle and a much narrower action. So usually early spring, I'm gonna go with these smaller baits, more finesse profiles, more finesse actions. When that water's still cold, like 57 and below, 55 and below, that's when they're really not gonna be as aggressive. They're still aggressive enough to eat the crankbait but they don't want something that has this much noise in it. When the bait gets bigger, the fish get more active, they're looking for bigger meals, their metabolism is faster in the summer and stuff like that, that's when you can go to these bigger crankbaits and really crush them on those bigger crankbaits because they're looking for the biggest meal they can get while exerting the least amount of energy because their metabolism is so fast that they have to keep eating to continue to feed themselves. So 
that's when you can get away with these bigger crankbaits once that water gets warmer. Usually I don't start going to these ones till the spawn is over. You just wanna make sure your crankbait goes a foot to two deeper than the target depth zone you're trying to fish. So if you're trying to fish something that is in eight foot of water, you need a 10 foot diving crankbait. It's gonna make sure it stays in the strike zone longer. And as I'll talk about later in the video, it'll make sure you can reel that crankbait slower and still keep it down in eight foot of water. Um, one thing you're gonna notice about colors on all my baits, we're looking at chartreuse, number one color, any type of chartreuse stuff like this right here. Chartreuse perch is a good one. Um, a lot of times early spring or just in general, these smallmouth love to eat perch. Anywhere there's smallmouth, there's usually perch just because they live in the same type of environment. So I fish a lot of chartreuses. It imitates perch really well. Another really good color is shad patterns. So I fish a lot of um, sexy shad and stuff like that. Those colors are really good for smallmouth as well. Um, occasionally I'll throw some red in there when the water gets really dirty, specifically like these type of colors right here. When that water is really dirty, that can also imitate a perch, but I don't throw that one as much. Um, I tend to stick more to the chartreuses when I can. That's gonna be my crankbait selection. So now let's head out on the water. We'll show you what we're looking for, then we'll show you how to fish it. Hopefully we'll catch some big smallmouth on this video. Okay, so when we're looking to throw a crankbait for smallmouth out here, we're actually out on Lake Erie right now. I'm gonna show you how to graph for these fish and what you're looking for. First thing you're looking for is any type of ledge or something like this. You can see where all these contour lines get really tight together. That's something you're looking for. Another thing to look for is points like this. You can see this point sticks out and has a sharp drop off there. Anything like that, rock piles on the bottom, just irregularities where these fish can stage up. You can see this one here, this one right here, there's a big spawning flat right here. So they can stage here, eat, and then when it's time to spawn, they just gotta swim right there. So that's the kind of stuff we're looking for. Now let's start the motor. I'll idle around here and I'm gonna show you a couple things on the bottom on what you're looking for actually on your structure scan itself. So let's get started. Now, what you'll notice is that the bottom here is very plain. You can see there's literally nothing down there, nothing down there, nothing up here. This is down scan, this is my side scan. There's absolutely nothing on the bottom. This is what you're looking for. See how that has really hard bottom returns right there? You can see this rock pile pop up on the map. So let me, let me stop this here. We got a couple. So we got a couple of them right here. So you can see how plain this bottom is out here. There's nothing. And that brighter spot right there, that's a hard return. So that, that's a rock pile that is where those fish are going to live so if you can mark this get your crankbait down in it and bounce it off those rocks all down this little spine there is going to be fish in that another one that popped up that one right there you can see that plain as day that is a rock pile there's another rock pile so you can see these are scattered out here rock pile rock pile rock pile these are probably all connected into one to be honest it, there's like a little v shape um but you can see these are all just kind of scattered out here and all you can do is just side scan around and mark these um, rock piles and then you can line up with your front graph and cast to these. Make sure your crankbait's coming through uh, fishy water at all times. So even out here, that one's a little harder to see because it's starting to fall off there. But that is another rock pile out to the left, way out there, like 62 feet off to my left there. So that is what you're looking for out here. That's the key to catching these smallmouth. They like hard bottom. There's bait in here, so there's gonna be crawfish that are in here. There's gonna be other fish that are schooling up in here. So a lot of times the perch will be in here. Um, smallmouth love perch. Um, the shad will school around here. On the Great Lakes, gobies will get in this 100%. So that's the stuff you're looking for. Steep drops, points, near spawning areas where they can sit out here and feed they'll eat your crankbait and then they'll go up and spawn once they're ready to spawn so that's what you're looking for 
So now that we've found the area that we want to fish with a crankbait, you can see right here I have this point and then there's a spawning bay that's back here that they can spawn at later. So all I'm doing is working this drop right here. So this point comes and drops off into deep water. This isn't the most updated map, but there's a steep drop here. It's probably six foot up on top of this and I'm in 12 here and then it's probably 15 to 20 out here. So I'm sitting right on that drop casting up and I'm going to bring my crankbait down this point and fish all the angles of this point here and we'll see if we can get a couple. So we got all our crankbait gear that we talked about in the beginning of this video. We got lined up on our spot. Now all there is to do is cast your crankbait out there. We're throwing it up on this drop here. We're gonna reel our crankbait down until it starts hitting the bottom. And then as soon as it starts hitting the bottom, we're gonna slow down our reel and try and fish it down there as slow as we can. Even though they're feeding right now and smallmouth are cold water fish, the water's only 49 and a half degrees right now, 50 degrees. So they're not gonna to be too, too aggressive. So the longer you can keep it down in the strike zone, there's one right there. The better chance you have of getting one to bite, just like that. It's a little one, but it's a fish. There he is. Ooh, stay out of the trolling motor. I'm not gonna boat flip you. just like that crankbait right in the face you can see he got all those troubles so he hit it pretty good um, bouncing it down on the bottom there right it came right off that drop just reeling it really slow we'll try and get some more and show you but that's about a two and a half pounder right there we're gonna go ahead and let her go so like I said all you do is once you get it down there you want to reel as slow as you can the slower you can reel and keep your crankbait down there especially for smallmouth this time of year when the water's still cold like I said, the better the chance you'll have to get a bite. Just because they get a chance to track it, chase it, it stays in their strike zone longer. So just turn the handle real slow and we'll see if we can catch some more. There's another one. That can't be a fish. Oh, it's a fish. It's a big one. Oh my, here we go. Yeah, that's my PB. <laughs> wow. Not as big as I thought, but that's the kind of fish you'll catch on a crankbait. <laughs> Probably not my PB. Now that is the kind of fish that you will catch fishing a crankbait for these smallmouth on these drops and points. They're getting set up here to spawn and all they want to do is eat, so they're biting. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let that big old girl go, and we're going to try and get one more on camera. There she goes. She splashed my camera, but that's okay. We drifted off a little bit, but we'll get back up there. And that's one thing about throwing this crankbait. You are going to catch some bigger fish. I, you'll get some small ones too, and it's not like you won't get a bunch of numbers, but if you're out here dragging a Ned rig all day, or you're fishing this crankbait, sometimes you're gonna get some bigger bites on this crankbait when they're willing to chase, just like that. I didn't even think that was a fish. I thought I got snagged. Not fishing heavy tackle for this either. You're fishing a, just this is my square bill rod, just a, a medium action glass crankbait rod, composite crankbait rod. 12 pound test and a small crankbait like that. It's a whole lot of fun to catch them like this. So another thing you can do while you're fishing these crankbaits is change your color. So we've been throwing that bright red. Now we're going to go to a chartreuse and try and imitate a perch and see if that different look can get us a bite. What's that? Yeah. I have no clue. There we go. Out. 
I just don't want to lose the crankbait. <laughs> and there's another one. Sorry my camera turned off for the other ones. I've probably caught five or six on a crankbait so far, but three for the on video today. We're going to go ahead and let her go. That is why you throw crankbait for spring smallmouth. I hope you enjoyed today's video talking all about how to fish a crankbait for smallmouth bass. It's not a technique that gets talked about very much, but it's so effective, especially for searching for them. They hit the bait so hard, harder than any largemouth ever will. Uh, it's just a lot of fun catching them this way, and it's really effective to find them. Smallmouth are known for being somewhere one day and not the next, so considering they roam so much, this is a very effective technique to find them with. Cover a lot of water, then once you find them, you can slow down with those more effective smallmouth techniques and catch more fish. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of my fishing tips or videos.